young Ernie and his family were invited to have Easter Sunday lunch at his grandmother's house. Everyone was seated around the table as the food was being served. When Ernie received his plate, he started eating straight away. Ernie waited until we say grace demanded his father. I don't have to, the five-year-old replied. Of course you do, Ernie, his mother insisted rather forcefully. We always say a prayer before eating at our house. That's at our house, Ernie explained. But this is grandma's house, and she knows how to cook. <laughs> I hope all of you will have a great Easter family lunch or dinner today. One day, I happened to hear the testimony of a Buddhist priest. One of the interesting stories he told was this. Although he was a Buddhist, he oftentimes read the Bible. One day, while he was reading the Bible, he was struck by the story of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus died, but three days later, he was resurrected. The story completely changed his mind as well as his faith. The Buddhist priest shared a similar story in Buddhism. When Buddha was alive, a woman visited him in desperation. The woman asked for help from Buddha because one of her family members were dying. So she asked Buddha to visit the dying person and heal the person. Buddha said, okay, with one condition. Buddha asked her to find a person who had died but had been resurrected in the village. If she could find the person, Buddha promised to heal her dying family member. So she desperately uh, began to visit neighbors door to door. Although she visited every person in the village, she was unable to find the person who had been resurrected. In desperation, she returned to the Buddha and said that there was no such a person in the village. Then Buddha said, you are right. No one is able to avoid death. Nobody has been resurrected, so don't expect your family member to get healed. Let him go. The Buddhist priest noticed Big difference between the story and the story of Jesus' resurrection in the Bible. So he began to doubt his faith in Buddhism and converted to Christianity. I really respect Buddhism. It is a great religion. Buddhism is still the largest religion in Korea. Christianity goes to second place. When I was growing up, I had many chances to get familiar with Buddhism. I really respect Buddhism as uh, a kind of religion. I don't want to depreciate Buddhism, but I want to just pinpoint difference in terms of resurrection between two religions. This morning, I would like to raise a question, brothers and sisters. What if there is no resurrection? What if death is the end of our lives? The same question was raised by Apostle Paul in the scripture today. He says this, If our hope in Christ is good for this life only, and no more than we deserve more pity than anyone else in the world. He goes on to say, In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. As all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. What if Jesus was not resurrected? Then Christianity would have been a pessimistic and sad religion. What if there is no resurrection? Then we are doomed to death. What if there is no resurrection? Then we are helpless in front of death. Mary was crying because the tomb was empty. 
Jesus' body was gone, she saw a man. She thought he was the gardener. So he, she asked him where Jesus' body was. But the man just called her name, Mary. All of a sudden, she knew it was Jesus, and he was alive. So she stopped crying and went back to the village to tell everyone that Jesus was alive. Mary crying and sorrow represent our crying and sorrow. What if there is no resurrection, then our crying would not stop, but the crying of Mary turned into joy. This is the power of resurrection of Jesus. This morning, the church will dedicate the memorial patio to God. There are around 60 names on the bricks. Many of them passed away. We will remember each of them by calling each name during dedication service. They are precious names, aren't they? Each name has many memories and stories to tell. One of them is the name of my father. Whenever I think about my father, I still become emotional. It is very meaningful to dedicate the memorial patio and remember them today at Easter morning. As we dedicate it to God, once again, we are reminded of the hope which Easter only is able to give us. There will be resurrection someday and we will meet together. You know, 2,000 years ago, some people put Jesus on the cross. They put him in the tomb and they thought that was the end of the story. But Jesus came back to life. He came out of the tomb to live forever. Jesus has conquered death. Brothers and sisters, we have been waiting for this moment for the last 40 days Lenten season. We have prepared for this moment through worship, prayer, presence, meditation, and Bible study. We have tried distance ourselves from pleasures. Today, the long waiting, the journey are ha finally rewarded. Today, finally, we are able to participate in the resurrection of Jesus, Easter Sunday. Brothers and sisters, to our surprise, Jesus is risen indeed. Jesus is no longer in a tomb. He is alive. Lastly, let me conclude my sermon with Easter proclamation. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of our King. Christ is conquered. Glory fills you. Darkness vanishes all forever. Rejoice, O holy church, exult in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. It is truly right that we should praise you, invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your son Jesus Christ, for Christ has ransomed us with his blood and paid the debt of Adam's sin to deliver your faithful people. May the morning star, which never sets, find this flame still burning. Christ, the morning star, who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on all creation, your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.